We're still zooming. We are all still zooming. And many of you are zooming from your iPhone or iPad. A few weeks ago, I recorded a video covering seven tips on how to use Zoom on your iPhone or iPad. Now, you should definitely go and watch that video first because this is a follow-up video covering three more tips, uh, basically that I just pulled from all the comments and questions that I got on that first video. Here, we're going to cover using virtual backgrounds in Zoom on your iPhone or iPad. Then we'll talk about how to view multiple meeting participants while you're in a Zoom meeting. And lastly, the biggest question I got was how to share video or audio while you're in a Zoom meeting from your iPhone or iPad. Now, many people know that you can use virtual backgrounds in Zoom meetings, but it does work a little bit differently on an iPhone or an iPad. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your iPhone or iPad actually supports virtual backgrounds in Zoom meetings. Not all of them do. Your iPhone must be an iPhone 8 or higher, which came out in 2017, or your iPad must be the original iPad Pro, which also came out in 2017, or you can use the fifth or sixth generation iPad, which came out in 2017 and 2018 respectively. Now, if you don't know what model iPhone or iPad that you have, you can find out by just going into your settings app and over on the left side, go to general. And then at the top on the right side, you'll see about. And if you look, the third item down is model name, and that should tell you what model iPhone or iPad that you have. Now, you also want to make sure that you have the most recent version of the Zoom app because they're constantly releasing updates for security and enhancements. In order to add a virtual background, you need to be in a Zoom meeting, even if it's one you just set up to play with virtual backgrounds. Once you're in a meeting, you're gonna tap on the More button, which brings up this menu here, and you can see Virtual Background. Now, by default, Zoom adds and provides a few images down there at the bottom for your purpose of, you can just choose those, or you can tap the little plus sign there, which will bring up any photos in your Photos app. In order to add your own virtual background, the photo must be in your Photos app, whether it's a picture that you took yourself or it's a picture that you downloaded from Unsplash or Pixabay or a similar site. Now, if you haven't given Zoom permission to access your photo roll, uh, it's gonna request that at this time. And then you can just go in and select the picture that works for you. Now, keep in mind, if the picture is square or if it's small, that picture is going to get blown up behind you to fill all of your background. So you just might want to experiment a little bit to see what works best for you. Now, when you're choosing and working with virtual backgrounds, just make sure that you remember this is a separate section of the Zoom meeting app. In other words, when you are done selecting your virtual background, you need to exit out of the virtual background section in order to get back to your Zoom meeting. Uh, on the iPhone, you're just gonna tap close in the bottom right corner. That takes you back to your meeting. Now on the iPad, you're just gonna tap the little X in the upper right corner, and that takes you out of the virtual background section and back into your Zoom meeting. Now during your meeting, if you wanna change your virtual background, you simply are just going to tap more again, go to virtual background, and here you're in the virtual background section, you can go and just select another background to switch to. Or you can just tap down here at the bottom to switch between the different virtual background pictures that you have. When you're done selecting another background, you want to exit out of the virtual background section. I'm just going to tap X there, and that takes me back to the actual Zoom meeting. If you want to take out the virtual background altogether, you've got to go back into virtual background, tap more, virtual background, and then over on the bottom left, you see where it says none. You simply just tap that to get yourself out of the virtual background. And now again, you need to exit out of the virtual background section. I'm going to tap X and that takes me back into the Zoom meeting. Now, lastly, let's say that you want to take some of those pictures out of your virtual background options. You got to go back into virtual background. So more virtual background and you can select one of the images down at the bottom. Now on the iPhone, you're going to tap to select the photo and then tap remove the photo. 
On the iPad here, you can see I'm just going to select the photo I want to remove, and there's a little trash can icon in the bottom right. And if I tap that, it just takes that picture out of my options for me. Virtual backgrounds on the iPhone and the iPad work just fine on their own, but if you want to kick it up a notch, I would definitely recommend using a green screen. Now the idea here is to have a solid color background that makes it easy for Zoom to erase behind you. Now this also uh, helps to take away sort of the, the bleeding outline or the amoeba-like outline that sometimes happens when you're in a Zoom meeting using a virtual background. Uh, you can actually use a blank wall or even a bed sheet, which I've been known to use before, but to do it proper, I would definitely recommend getting a green screen set up from Amazon or somewhere similar. I've included links to some recommendations down in the notes. I like using this green screen that I got from Amazon with the adjustable telescoping supports so I don't have to nail it to the wall or hang it from the ceiling or anything. It also comes with this muslin fabric which nicely drapes down and minimizes the wrinkles and creases which could cause shadows. But the great thing is it doesn't have to be perfect. Zoom is actually very forgiving when it comes to green screen so that you don't have to worry too much about the wrinkles and such. Uh, the only downside really is that if you're using a green screen on your iPad or your iPhone that uh, you're probably going to have to stay in one place which kind of defeats the whole purpose of attending a Zoom meeting on a mobile portable device. On the iPad, there is actually now an option that you can tell the Zoom app that you're using a green screen. If you go to more and the virtual background section and tap the three dots there down in the bottom right, you can see enabling the green screen option here will improve your virtual background quality if you have a solid color background. Uh, green is recommended. When you tap that on, on, the next thing you're going to do is use a little eyedropper there to tell Zoom which color that the, you want it to erase. And if you tap on that, it will now erase that color in the back. Uh, green is recommended because we don't have a lot of green in our skin tones, but you can see it, it pretty much improves the quality of how sharp I look on that background. Oh yeah, and just in case you need to know this, uh, don't wear any clothes that have green in it or uh, maybe not use a coffee mug that is actually green in color. There are two main views in a Zoom meeting, how you view the videos of the meeting participants. The default view is called active speaker view. And in this view, your entire screen is taken up by the meeting participant that is currently and actively speaking. The other view is called gallery view. And in this view, you have small boxes of each of the videos from the meeting participants, kind of what I like to call the Brady Bunch view. By default, when you enter a Zoom meeting, you are probably in active speaker view, which means that you're watching the video of the person that's currently speaking. To switch into gallery view, it's a little bit different when you're on an iPhone versus an iPad. On the iPhone, you can switch into the gallery view by simply swiping to the left on the active speaker view. Now that will put you into gallery view, but you are limited to only viewing four participants at a time. If there are more than four participants in your meeting, you just keep swiping left to see four more participants at a time. To go back to speaker view, just swipe to the right. On the iPad, you have little buttons in the upper left corner to switch between the active speaker view and the gallery view. If you don't see those buttons, you can tap the screen to have your meeting controls appear, or you can watch my previous video where I showed you how to have those meeting controls always show by default. Now on the iPad, the gallery view will show up to nine participants at a time because the screen is a little bigger and you can swipe to the left to view more participants. To go back to the active speaker view, you just simply tap that button. One other option is to pin a video which will bring the focus on a specific participant's video, even if they're not actively speaking. Now you have to be in gallery view for this to work and I only find that it works for participants that are showing video, that actually have their video turned on. 
All you do is simply double tap the video of the participant that you want to pin and it will put that participant's video then into full screen, even if they're not currently speaking. Now to unpin that video, just double tap it again and you'll go back into gallery view. By far, the top question people had from that first video was how they could share video or audio from their iPhone or iPad while they were in a Zoom meeting. For example, several teachers asked how they could show a YouTube video from their iPhone or iPad or a keynote or PowerPoint presentation to their students while they were in a Zoom meeting. Now, in that first video, I showed how to use the share content button, which allowed you to share photos from your iPhone or iPad or documents from Dropbox or Google Drive and even a whiteboard that allowed participants to draw or annotate on the screen. Now, if you want to show video and audio or even an app from your iPhone or iPad while you're in a Zoom meeting, there are a few additional steps that you need to take to do what Zoom calls screen sharing. First, once again, we need to make sure that your iPhone or iPad can support the screen sharing function in the Zoom app. In order to do this, your iPhone or iPad must be able to run at least iOS 11 or higher. And today we're on 13 or 14 and most modern day iOS devices can run at least iOS 11. Next, because of the security settings and iPhones and iPads, uh, the screen sharing function from the Zoom app requires a quick visit to the settings app in order to add the screen recording function into your control center. Now, this is just a one time setup, but it's a good idea to do this so that it can work seamlessly when you are in a Zoom meeting. In order to turn this on, you'll just need to go into your settings app and over on the left, you're going to go over to control center. And then you're going to tap on customize controls and you're just going to scroll down until you find the screen recording function. Just tap the little green plus sign there so that screen recording is now added into your control center. Now go back to the Zoom app and I'm going to tap share content and then select screen. Now, sometimes this option will give me a list of active apps to choose from and other times it will just be the Zoom app that is available here. And of course, that's what we need to select. Now, next, you're going to tap start broadcast, but you can see the little warning there that everything on your screen, including notifications or Facebook messages or any DMs will be recorded. And they suggest enabling do not disturb to prevent unexpected notifications. That's a good idea. So before you start, just make sure that you pull this down to go into your control center and tap the little, uh, crescent moon there for do not disturb and that way there won't be any notifications that come down in your meeting that shows out to all of your participants now the zoom app tells you that you are sharing your screen and at this point your meeting participants are looking at what's on your ipad screen but at this point you can jump into another app such as youtube and you can start playing the video content there. If you go into full screen, your meeting participants will see that in just the way that you see it on your iPad screen. You can play uh, music from Spotify, for example, or you could go into a PowerPoint presentation and you could even go into the slideshow on your iPad and your meeting participants will be seeing you play your PowerPoint presentation through the Zoom meeting app. And basically whatever you see on your iPad screen is what is broadcasting to your zoom meetings now you can jump back to the zoom meeting app at any time and you can actually turn off the device audio uh, you can toggle that on and off now that's just the audio of what you are sharing like a video or a spotify channel or something that is not the microphone through the zoom meeting now to stop the screen share you'll need to go back into the zoom meeting app and you can tap the stop share icon in the top right corner up there that will stop the screen share. Uh, another way that you can stop the screen share is that if you were in another app, for example, and on the iPad, if you look in the top right hand corner, there's a little sort of an 
oblong red button up there that's telling you that it is in the midst of screen recording but if you tap on that it gives you this option here to stop broadcasting your screen with zoom so if you tap stop on that that stops your screen share going through the zoom meeting and it just brings you back to a regular zoom meeting uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments goodness knows i have answered a ton of questions uh in that first video but always happy to help so please ask away and if you found this video helpful please consider subscribing to us and definitely give us a thumbs up you can also visit my website at absentlaw.com thanks for watching